Hello and welcome to our video on Google Earth and Tor Builder. My name is Corinne Kelly and I'm one of the consultants for SOIDA, one of the state ed techs in Ohio. If you have any questions about anything that we talk about today, please feel free to email me at Corinne, C-A-R-Y-N, at SOIDA, S-O-I-T-A dot org, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions regarding Earth and Tor Builder. The only sites you're going to need <clears throat> for this are earth.google.com, which is Google Earth, and then Tor Builder, which is one of those with Google tools. Um, so it's torbuilder.withgoogle.com. So later on, if you can't remember, you can just Google, Google Tor Builder. It'll pop right up. If you're planning on getting a certificate for watching this video, um, please head to the ohioedtechs.org site and fill out the form. The form should accompany these videos. And you're going to need this code, GETB. That needs to be in all caps, Google Earth Tour Builder, GETB. And fill that out. Make sure you put your email address in correctly. It'll ask you the um, title of the video and the code, and then you'll receive um, your certificate for this program. Okay? We're going to take a look at Google Earth first, and then we'll dip our toes into Tour Builder after that. So let's head over to Google Earth. It's just Earth dot google dot com okay and you'll need to launch earth and sometimes it can take a second okay this is a really dynamic website so it just takes a minute to load sometimes there we go it's always good if you're at school and your internet is notoriously slow to get that up and running before the start of class Okay, I'm not sure where it's dropped us, but here we are. Okay. Interesting. All right, here we go. So, when you come into Google Earth, you're going to see, obviously, like I said, it's really dynamic. Um, you've got a couple different controls. You can grab the globe and move it. Okay. You can... Use your search, which is up here. We're going to work our way down these. There's a little menu that pops out here that's got search, Voyager projects, a lot of these that we are already looking at on here. But if you want to access them there as well, there they are. Um, so the search. Let's look for the Grand Canyon. And then it's going to take us there. All right. So we're going to zoom in. It's going to pull up the info card for Grand Canyon National Park. If you're like, hey, that's really cool, you can put that right here. Um, and then there's this Add to Project, which is new. Click Add to Project. Uh, place title is Grand Canyon National Park. And then I'm going to do a new project. I'm going to call this... Um, United States National Parks, right? All right, save. Cool, there we are. All right. And then if you're like, hey, I want to see where else people look, there's a little link down here. People also explore the Grand Canyon Village. Zion, maybe you want to add Zion. Yep, add that to our places. Bryce Canyon, this is making my project a little too easy, <laughs> isn't it? Yosemite. All right, so I'm adding this to my places, all right? Um, you are able to search to add a place like I'm doing right now. Yellowstone. Don't give this assignment to your kids, National Parks, right? This is too easy. Okay, I'm going to close that out. It'll go away, all right? And then you can also just drop a place mark. So if they found a really cool spot, um, like Angel's Window. Actually, since that was already there, I could just add Angel's Window to my project if I wanted to. Um, or they can go to New Feature, Add Place Mark. And then you just select your location and put it in there. So you have some control there. I'm going to get out of here again. All right. Um, so if you are having your kids come in and you want to create a collection of places, you're able to use this. Um, it's like a brand new feature. 
in Google Earth where you can create these different um, collections, these different projects. And there's a tutorial down here, like I said, it's really new. So make sure you check that out if you're going to investigate this at all. Um, when you are in this view here, okay, I've got projects over here. Do you see how that's hidden? I'm going to just get it out of the way for now. All right. Um, right now I'm in 2D, but if I click 3D, it's going to tilt the earth, and then I get to take advantage of all this really cool 3D imagery that we see. And that's really nice because you're going to be able to see elevations. Um, you're going to be able to see different architectural elements depending on where you are. So you can see here. Let's go in. To Angel's window here. I'm able to kind of see these different elevations, but I also can grab my little street view guy and anywhere there's blue, so there's blue dots here. If you were somewhere where you could drive, you would see blue lines where they've driven around. I'll be able to come in. Look at this. There's a lot of 360 views here. These people clearly are not afraid of heights. Okay, and I can kind of get more of an idea of what it would look like if it was standing there. And then to get out of the street view, you just click this little guy. All right, so you can start other places. Let's go to, oops, come here. Here we go. Nope, that's not what I want. I keep clicking the wrong thing. There we go, click the magnifying glass. Search, let's go to the Eiffel Tower. And you don't want the Eiffel Tower restaurant. Here we go. Just so you can see what I meant by the architectural um, in that 3D. So we're still in 3D. So you see what I mean? They've got like all of Paris in 3D. It's really cool. Um, and then you can still, look, it just took me back to 2D and then 3D. Hope nobody's getting seasick with me. You guys, you guys still there? Um, so you can travel all over the place. You have to get really specific when you go to some places. Like if you go to want to go to the Great Wall of China, you have to find the one in China because you'll get a lot of restaurants. Same thing we saw with Eiffel Tower and some other places like that. Um, but it's a really cool tool. They've added that creation tool as well. So I'm going to go look at my projects so we can see what we've made. I'm going to my U.S. National Parks. I'm going to pull it up. Um, so we were just adding. I can continue to add to it. You can edit your different places. Okay, put a different um, place mark, a different color in there if you wanted to. And then what I'm going to do is say present. And it's going to pull me up to my starting point. I've got a table of contents here that shows me each stop. And then I'm able to go to place to place to place. Okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> So that's a, a pretty new feature there, All right? So we've looked at just the search, we saw the cards, and then we saw this new creation tool. You also have, let me get out of here, little black arrow, um, the roll of the die. We like him. Hide my projects. That's going to take you a different place every time. So it's just roll the dice. This would be great if you were teaching geography every day. Just roll that die. Let's see where we end up today and take a look around. Just kind of explore the world. Um, oh, now we're in Malta. All right. Okay. And then above that is the little ship's wheel. And that's Voyager. So Voyager is um, really, really cool. A lot of people don't think about this when they think about Google Earth. And what it is is it's almost like little presentations that go along with your locations and Earth. Like we've got fairy tales around the world, Discover Japan. So these are the editor's picks right now. You also have games. They have like a, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? They have this really fun holiday traditions game for the holiday season. Rock and roll icons. There's Carmen. They've got three of those right now, it looks like. Natural Wonders. So there's little games with quiz questions. Um, 
layers, global glacial coverage, uh, satellite imagery, hurricanes and tropical storms, volcanoes. So great to see how those layers interact. There's your street view, nature, culture. And then they do have a nice education section. Um, and a lot of these are really well done. You'll see some of them are by providers that you're going to know. Um, BBC, PBS, Reading is Fundamental, those type of things. Um, let's go into Underground Railroad and see what they have in there. So we'll say, okay, start exploring. And it's going to pull up this little sidebar for me. So I can see there's nine stops. So right now we're looking at the Niagara River. Okay, and then it's going to give us a little background there. Civil War battlefield, we're going there next. Sometimes there's videos in here, sometimes there's links, it just depends. Um, there's some really nice collections, so it's worth going in and exploring and seeing if there's anything to support your content area, um, because there might be something really nice that's made almost just for you. Now we're going to the Wilmington Friends Meeting in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, so oh, I love that. I love that 3D imagery. It's just so cool. It makes the kids feel like they're there. I'll tell you, the first time you do this, if they haven't seen it before, and the earth just seems to move and you drop down, it's, it's got a really cool wow factor. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, this is really cool, but I'd really like to make one of these myself, or I'd like the kids to be able to make something like this, um, because this is a little more dynamic than what we created where it was like we were just hopping from place to place, although that was cool and really easy. Um, that's where Tour Builder comes in, okay? So if you go to Tour Builder with me, tourbuilder.withgoogle.com, Tour Builder is kind of like a marriage between Google Earth and Google Slides presentation. All right, so you'll have to sign in. Okay, and then I'm going to create a tour. I'm going to call this EdTech Demo so I can remember to delete it later. Oops. Create tour. All right, here we go. Okay, so it's not completely dissimilar to what we were just doing. This is our, like our title slide. So see how we have this over here? This is going to be like our slide sorter, but instead of slides, it's going to be stops on our tour. Um, so this is our title. You can have an introduction picture if you want. I'm just going to find something. <laughs> Okay, and then you can write a little bit about this. And I really like this um, writing element to that because it's just so important. All right, so now we're ready to add a location. So I'm going to click Add Location. Let's do some of our national parks, okay? Um, Yellowstone. All right, it's going to take us there. I'm going to say, yep, that's it, add to tour. It's going to open it up. I can add photos and videos up to 25. So you can add photos and videos from YouTube or from your computer. I'm going to go to more and search for images. And search for Yellowstone National Park. Try to find some good ones. Okay and say select, and now they're in there, okay? And you could do the same thing with the videos. Um, another cool thing with this is you can add start and end dates. Those are totally optional. You can add one, the other, both, neither. Um, but that's really nice if you're reading like a historical fiction novel or I'm having my kids recreate um, a timeline of Union Civil War victories or something like that. This could be really helpful. So we can use this as kind of like a timeline tool as well as a present presentation tool. And you can type a little bit and you have the option if you want to change your icon. I'm going to use 
little trees. How about that? Little trees. All right, and then I'm ready to add another location. Let's do Grand Canyon National Park. Add that to the tour. We'll look for the canyon. The kids love this. And, uh, you know, the first time that I used this, I think it was with fourth graders, their first question was, can we make one of these? And they can, because it's tied to their Google account. Um, so they can make it. It's fun to do places I want to visit. Um, you know, you can do something that's tied into your curriculum. I've seen these done on Anne Frank and Bud Not Buddy and Watson's Go to Birmingham and all these great books um, you can do this with. Okay. Select. The other thing you can do here is use that uh, little Google Earth guy. So let me add another location. Let's do Angel's Landing. Put it right there. Okay. And then we're going to go in. I'm going to add it to the tour and drop him down here. And when you get a view that you like, you just go over here to lock this view. And instead of arriving at that destination on the map, you'll arrive here. Okay. So let's just say we're done. I know we've only got a couple stops, but we're done editing. And then we're ready to... Play. So you can play it right in here. Okay. Um, so we would start here. I've got my little sidebar open. So we'd start there. This is our demo. Then we're going to go to Yellowstone. I've got my pictures. I can make those full screen if we want to look at our pictures, partially full screen. Okay. And we go to our next stop. It's a little jerky, right? Still nice. Good presentation tool. I'm going to get out of the exit. I'm going to exit full screen. You have a link to share. So if you want to share with other people, you have a link. You can also add other people so that they can access it. She can view it. Um, you want to make sure if you're going to share it out via link that you do do. Anyone has a link can view. Um, otherwise, you have to invite individuals. Now, let's say I just wanted to present this but that presentation window we were in earlier was a little jerky. You're going to go to this drop-down menu right here. Say, open in Earth. Okay? I'm going to say, anyone has a link, because if you want to open it in Earth, you have to do that. And it takes a minute, because it's going to load Earth. And it's going to open up, and it's going to look a lot like those Voyager presentations that we were in. Look at that. I'm going to hide that. Okay. So instead of being over there in that kind of jumpy one, a jumpy view, we now have the smoother view here. Look at that. And we still have all our images. Okay. Now we're going to go over to Grand Canyon. We've got our images. You can pop these out as well. Okay. Went away. There we go. Pull my presentation tool back up. There we are. Okay. Um, and then we'll go over there. So it just is a little smoother. All right. Now, I, I know you, some of you, especially language arts and English people, heard me talk about doing this with books and your, your wheels are spinning. Um, I would in, really encourage you to go to Google Lit, as in literature trips. It's googlelittrips.org. They have tons of these already done. Um, some of them are 
still in that old Google Earth format. So you might see that um, if it won't open. Come in here. Um, if it won't open for you automatically in Earth, you can go into Earth and say, open KML file from computer. So if they send you one where it's a file you have to download, it's probably a Google Earth file, you can come in, you'll go to the projects, just like we did before with that little, it's like a square with a um, point dropped on it, and you can go up to the menu, see where it says new project, and say oh, import KML from Google Drive, and then it will work. But a lot of them, they're transferring over. See, there's Esperanza Rising right there. Um, so that it will just open in uh, Google Lit Trips or Google Earth for you. So it's really nice. See, 35 most popular Lit Trips have been upgraded and extensively enhanced. So these are the tiles that have already been upgraded. Um, we'll go in there. Here's the, and it talks to you about um, viewing that. Okay, to get these um, titles, what you have to do first is sign up. So, member registration right here. Register with your email and then you will need to re request a lit trip. You can come in and you can look at all the titles. So if I teach K5, I'm going to go K5. Let's just do Esperanza Rising. Um, I'll give, let you guys obviously look at those later, all those titles. So when you're ready and you found one you like, you can go to request a lit trip. And then you have to remember which email you signed up with because that's the email you have to put in. It doesn't cost anything, but they just want you to register. There she is. It has so many good ones. In high school, too, like all of your like classics are in here already. And I'm going to request a lit trip. And then what it's going to do is it's going to email it to me. And that's not always super duper fast. Um, I can guarantee it's not going to be here quickly enough for me to show you, but let me just double check. Nope, it's not here yet. So <clears throat> you'll wait for that. So definitely not something you want to do right before the start of class, but these are fantastic, fantastic resources. Again, if you have any questions for me, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions following our program, just shoot me that email again. My email is corinne at soita.org, C-A-R-Y-N at soita, S-O-I-T-A.org, and I'd be happy to get back with you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.